I'm just here to say, like, seven months ago, I quit. I haven't uploaded for seven months, and, um, I don't think I will. Like, I don't think I'm gonna come back to YouTube. Just, like, being honest, like, I just got a, got a fucking life, I guess, and I don't have time for YouTube anymore. I haven't had time since seven months ago. Ah, there you are. I see you've joined me here at the cemetery. Figured it'd be an appropriate setting for this video. Now, you might be asking, why exactly am I here in the cemetery making this video and looking like a dumbass in the process? Well, that's because this video has to do with YouTubers, and specifically why a lot of them quit very early on. Think of this kind of like Stale Part 2, but not really since this would be more of a spin-off. Now, on the internet's most toxic website, Twitter, I've been able to meet some smaller creators who have made somewhat similar videos to mine. A lot of those being annoying spurgs plaguing my feed with the dumbest tweets and somehow getting 20 likes for it. But a lot of them are young, specifically between middle school and high school, and very few of them have over a thousand subscribers. I wouldn't even consider the majority of these people to be friends, seeing as they've only briefly DM'd me or I follow some of them back because I like their videos. Not that I'm even very well known in the commentary community anyways, which that name has always sounded fucking stupid to me. But since the day I've created my Twitter, I've seen a bunch of people come and go, and they all seem to quit very early on when their channel has barely started growing, which is a damn shame for some people because I felt like a lot of them had a lot of potential. I'm basically skips in this image. Now, the bigger question you might be asking is, why am I even on Twitter in the first place? Well, simply put, it's the only way of getting the attention of YouTube in the event that something bad happens to this very channel that you're watching this video on. It's kind of a rule of thumb at this point, especially if the content you make won't go well with advertisers. You know, not that I really have to worry about that, because despite the fact I have 11,000 subscribers, nobody really knows who the fuck I am in the grand scheme of things. You know, unless you count that one time I got the attention of Keemstar for calling him out on some stupid shit, but my channel's not even monetized, so it's not like I have to worry about the yellow dollar sign anytime soon. Now, in the stale video, I brought up this unnecessary pressure that many small creators feel where you always have to be coming up with new ideas that relate to the kind of videos that people initially subscribe to in the first place. And in the case of a lot of these people, they all worry about pleasing their 150 subscribers that most likely came from Twitter or Discord group chats. And I think that's one of the major reasons as to why they quit. It's an unnecessary pressure to please your small audience of only 10 active viewers that probably won't care about the types of videos you make or how often you upload. And yes, I'm aware that those YouTube guru channels tell you to upload consistently or else your channel won't go anywhere because they know all the secrets to YouTube. But more often than not, they're full of shit. Uploading consistently is a lot harder than it sounds for some people. Especially due to the fact that a lot of these people are still in school and aren't able to balance schoolwork and uploading a video every week. It burns you out quickly. I know from experience because two years ago I was trying to pump out a video every week in hopes that my channel would grow faster. But eventually that stopped because they barely did anything for my channel and I knew that if I kept doing it, school would become an absolute fucking nightmare for me. And on top of that, they're all super rushed videos because I felt that unnecessary pressure to be pumping out content every week. And yes, they're shitty videos because of it. It's why you can only find a select few of them left on my channel because most of them were just filled to the brim with ear rape jokes. Although, to be fair... The comments kind of made them worth it. <laughs> Pretty much the only way to balance school and YouTube is to make your videos somewhat formulaic, which is both a good and bad thing because it'll make it easier for you to upload more, but at the same time, your videos will also go stale even faster, which, me personally, that's not how I want to make videos. Uh, oh, man. Oh, man. Okay, um, but back on track... Uh, many of the channels that I've come across were always grinding these reaction commentary videos. Although recently it seems to have switched to topic commentary. And when you've been grinding for, let's say, a year with little to no success, and you see one of your friends who's only been making videos for like, let's say, half a year, and then all of a sudden uploads a video that gets like hundreds of thousands of views and their channel ends up skyrocketing, it's really hard not to compare yourself to what they're doing, and so then you start watching their channel like a constipated hawk. I've been in that situation many times, and it's beyond frustrating because you feel like you deserve that success more than they do, and so you're just left screaming into the void for a few people. And it doesn't help the fact that I, and I'm sure many Many other people struggle with the mindset that if you don't succeed by a certain age, you're considered a failure. 
Like I'm 19 right now and I've been out of school for over a year. So unless I make another video that ends up getting over a million views and ends up skyrocketing and doesn't get copyrighted, I'm not gonna make this a job anytime soon. And you know, that's fine because I didn't set out to make money in the first place. Uh, now, another reason as to why these small creators quit is because of time. As I stated before, a lot of these people are young and still in school. But sometimes they can get caught up in other hobbies that end up overshadowing YouTube. Or life just catches up to them and they simply aren't able to make videos anymore. In fact, you want to know why my videos have been so inconsistent these past like two or three years? That and half the time I don't know what the hell to make a video about because usually after I do finish a video I want to jump right into the next one but I have no idea what to make it about and so I just end up making some shitty idea that I eventually end up trashing. Mainly because whenever I would go to see if anybody had already made a video about the subject that I wanted to make a video about they would already say everything that I want to say and so basically I come to the realization that I would be adding nothing new except for just regurgitating whatever they said but with my voice and my editing. And so then I wait for about two to three weeks before something pops into my head that I really like. And now some of you might be asking why I haven't quit, seeing as I've been doing this thing for a few years now and I've only managed to amass about 11,000 subscribers. Trust me, I've considered quitting at least once. In fact, I remember someone replying to one of my tweets where I had just announced that I had uploaded a new video saying, Damn, you haven't even hit 2k yet, I'm surprised you haven't quit. Since at the time I was struggling to crack 2,000 subscribers for a year. And one of my biggest inspirations as to why I'm still around is a YouTuber who you might not have heard of named Gokunaru. He started his channel in May of 2011 and after seven and a half years of making videos his channel only amassed about 13,000 subscribers and only had about 200 active viewers. But then in October of 2018 he uploaded the infamous The Death of H3H3 Productions video and he was finally able to get his channel off the ground and shot up to 75,000 in under two months. And of course, despite me explaining this, I still get comments from people asking me why my videos are so inconsistent. Well, just so that it's drilled into your fucking skull. One, I didn't have much time to focus on YouTube because of school, and now I have a job. Two, my videos require a lot more time than a lot of people that just shit out content regularly. And three, you do realize that everything on this channel is done by me, right? So why the fuck should it matter when I upload? Have some goddamn patience! Alright, real talk. I don't think I can keep doing this video outside, because otherwise it's just going to take me another like two to three years to finish it. Okay, that's better. Now this only applies to certain channels and it's a bit complicated to explain. So let's say, you know, a small channel with only a few people watching, all of a sudden hits it big with a video that gets at least like 10,000 views, and then their channel starts to get off the ground a little bit. And this can go in two directions. Either they gain some new people watching because they really enjoyed the video, or the video gets a lot of views, people subscribe, and then they kind of just don't care to watch anything else they've uploaded. It's basically a one-hit wonder phenomenon. And it gets even worse for them once the traction from that video starts to slow down. Their videos will only get about 1 of the views compared to their sub count because the people only sub for that one video and don't care to watch anything else they made. In other words, the only thing that's changing is the sub count and not the amount of people watching. And of course if they get caught up in it then they'll start to get demotivated and then they'll start saying that their channel is dying. So they either continue to upload for literally no one or they end up abandoning that channel and either give up entirely or start a brand new one. You know, in the hopes that they'll actually be able to get an audience.
Now on the other hand, when they gain new people watching because they really enjoyed the video, depending on the person behind the scenes, they might not know how to handle it, and that unnecessary pressure kicks into hyperdrive because now you've got a whole bunch of eyes anticipating what you're gonna do next. You could follow up said viral video with some sort of part 2 and then ease them into your content while also tweaking whatever you can to make your videos as good as possible, try to create something different that somehow ends up gaining just as much attention, or you just have a mental breakdown and do nothing because you have no idea how to handle it. And that, more often than not, is what causes a lot of these small creators to just become one-hit wonders. And yes, I'm aware that the concept of a one-hit wonder can be applied to other forms of media aside from YouTube, like music for example. There's numerous bands or artists that I know that could be considered one-hit wonders because they're only known for that one-hit song. And trying to follow it up with another hit song is probably beyond frustrating. Now if it sounds like I'm spewing a bunch of stuff out of my ass this entire video, well... Yeah, that's kind of what I've been doing, but also because I've experienced this shit before. Well, except the one-hit wonder to an extent. But if for whatever reason you wanted to hear someone else's perspective about making content and having the urge to quit from struggling to get anywhere on this website, well, you're in luck. Hello, I'm here to answer questions for Keaton Walsh's final video on YouTube.com. My name is, uh, my name is Adepti, but I formerly went by Database Productions. I make cringe weeb shit now, so you don't want to go subscribe to me if you expect my old content. So anyways, I'm going to answer these questions. All right, the first one is, how long have you been on YouTube in general? Well, I actually created my first YouTube account in 2009 when I was like, I think 10 years old or nine years old, but that account got banned because um, yeah, I was a pretty interesting child. I'll just say that. So technically, um, you know, I'm not supposed to be on the website, but I think back then, you know, it didn't matter. I don't think there was a rule against making a new account. So I, it doesn't matter. I haven't had an account get banned since. So do you feel an unnecessary pressure to make videos? If so, how does it affect you? I do not. Let me tell you why. When I was on my database productions channel, I did feel this way. I felt like there was some sort of standard I had to meet. This was mostly due to the peers that I associated myself with and seeing them soar past me in numbers and things like that. It made me, I guess in a way jealous, but it was also like, okay, I got to catch up if I want to be a part of this crowd. And you know, that feeling that was in my head that I had to be a part of a crowd was what set me back. It was what made me quit and leave the commentary community, or at least part of the reason. Nowadays on my new channel, you know, I haven't really gone anywhere with it yet. I haven't made any serious content with it yet, even though it's just Genshin Impact shit. But when I do start to make content i'm gonna do it at my own pace and i'm just gonna do it for the people that want to watch it if i blow up i blow up if i don't i don't i'm not gonna like hold myself to some kind of standard because youtube is not my priority and and let's be honest youtube is not a sustainable job at all like it is not if you really get on here expecting to be pewdiepie or a fucking millionaire you know you've got a long fucking road ahead of you even if you have the talent and creative ingenuity to make it as far as someone like him does it feel frustrating when you see someone's channel take off in a shorter time span than you yes especially when i was at database productions it definitely was very frustrating there was a guy i'm gonna go ahead and say it man this guy is very talented his name is dr skipper okay when i saw him take off i was cool with the guy but i was also very jealous and seeing him take off when i felt like my videos and his were equal in quality you know it was really devastating but at the same time it's just how the game works you know you can't be mad at the person for taking off you know you, you should really just say hey man you know we're all in this doing the same thing we have the same goal to entertain people um it's very demotivating but you got to look at it that way you know we're all in this to do the same thing we're not here to compete or you know pit ourselves against each other because that's when it becomes you know the hostile environment that it is and um that's when it becomes demotivating so that's why nowadays i don't you know when i have youtuber friends and people that i know i don't compare myself to their content i don't look at my friends content and say i need to do better than that or i need to do just as well you know i just i don't care it's just numbers on on a screen at the end of the day, you know, I guess that's just me because I make YouTube my hobby. I don't, you know, make it my main focus like a lot of people on here do, but that's just me. Do you find it hard to balance school and YouTube at the same time? Well, I don't go to school, but I do go to work. And yeah, like I said, I, um, you know, I'm going to answer this as if you said work. I go to work and I do my things and I, <laughs> I use YouTube as like a secondary hobby. I don't prioritize it. I used to take 
days off of work years ago to make YouTube videos. Like one of my best videos, it was something about this Pokemon YouTuber. I, I remember taking a whole day off of work just to edit that video and I still didn't finish it in that day. Like, I mean, I, I was really obsessed with it and I found it hard to balance that and YouTube, you know, and I just, it, it wasn't a good thing to do. How have your other hobbies affected you making content? It doesn't really affect it very much because I prioritize things I want to do over things that I feel like I have to do. Because, you know, like I said before, when I feel like there's a standard I have to meet, I don't have fun anymore. So I, I'm not going to ever feel like I have a standard to meet anywhere on YouTube. What do you think are some of the biggest struggles when it comes to making content? I would say networking. You know, if you're trying to uh, meet other YouTubers of the same, you know, kind of content you make, you know, trying to get yourself out there, that's probably the biggest struggle because a lot of people don't have the same interests and goals as you. A lot of people are just, let's be honest, out here to clout chase. Um, and I think it's also very hard to feel the desire to make videos when you look at your thing and it says 10 out of 10 or 9 out of 10 and you know your previous video was a 1 out of 10 for the first week you know um i i think that's probably the biggest struggle is like feeling like you're not getting yourself out there enough and that's why i say just i, I post my stuff and i log off that, that at least that's what i'm gonna do when i start making actual content again for my new channel like i'm not gonna have some kind of standard i want to meet what's something that you've learned when it comes to experience here on youtube the internet is not everything that's what I've learned. The internet is not your friend. No one on here is your friend. You know, you can network with people. You can get to know people. You can share your content around and communities and stuff, but stop pretending that the internet is the entire world. All right. Uh, that goes for discord, Twitter, YouTube, everything. Uh, I don't know how relevant this is to the question, but it's not the entire world. You know, that that's something I've learned. Um, and I used to treat it that way. I used to be very chronically terminally online. Um, and it, it's just not, it's not a good thing, you know. Don't make this shit your priority. And if you want to make a career out of YouTube and you have a genuine desire to, then you need to understand that you can't just create a YouTube channel with five subscribers on it and make that your full priority and don't prioritize your real life because that's the biggest mistake a lot of people make. And that's why it's very hard to blow up or get anywhere on this website. People dedicate full time to this shit and they have 13 subscribers and they think, you know, wow, you know, I deserve more because I'm putting so much work into this. Don't be like me. You don't deserve anything. <laughs> you earn what you get. And even then, you know, it's not guaranteed. This website and its algorithm is so unpredictable. It's not everything. Are you afraid of ever becoming a one hit wonder? I don't think there's no such term as that. I, I really don't because at the end of the day, you, you make yourself a one hit wonder. If you make a video on a topic, like let's say in the commentary community, if you make a video on a blowing up topic, like some guy getting accused of something serious you make a video about it of course it's gonna get a million views i don't think you're a one-hit wonder for that i think it's more along the lines of you're choosing the wrong thing to make videos about if that makes sense because one-hit wonder it's just something that doesn't exist you know in the music industry sure you know in, in media industry sure but this is youtube you know we're just make we're kids in our basement making fucking videos it's not like one hit wonder this or that you know everyone has that one video that's gonna get a extreme amount of views compared to the other. That's why there's a popular button when you look at your channel, you know, videos do blow up videos do hit the algorithm unfortunately it's just how this website works you know one video might hit the algorithm because it's something everyone wants to see and sometimes videos hit the algorithm after being published for eight years and all of a sudden they hit the algorithm and there's no ex explanation for it that's why you see people in the comments going who's here because it was in the recommended you know this website is so unpredictable so I, that's why I, I refuse to believe there is a concept known as one hit wonder when it comes to like someone making content any advice to content creators watching that are considering quitting. Do what you want to do. Um, I'm not going to tell you to quit, especially if you're making commentary content. That's probably the majority of you listening to this. Do whatever you want to do. If it makes you happy and you genuinely find interest in doing this, then keep doing it. All right. If you find, you know, that this makes you depressed, you feel like you have some kind of standard to meet constantly, you know, you have something to fucking constantly feel like you got to grab at, you know, if, if it's like that to you and you feel so stressed out, like, oh my God, my latest video, uh, the one before that got 1.5K views, but this one only got 450, you know, if, if you're doing that every time you upload and, you know, you're on Twitter trying to retweet your video constantly and trying to DM people to get them to watch it, at that point, you know, you need to ask yourself, is this for you? 
because you're you're trying to make this a career you're trying to take this full time seriously and it's just not working out where you're at my suggestion is if you really find an interest in it then just step back from it prioritize it some of the time not all the time because if you really find interest in this you're going to burn yourself out permanently that's part of the reason I left the community but uh, at the same time there's a bigger reason why I left it and I'm not going to go too deep into that my advice would be to just do what you want to do don't feel like you have to do something and don't feel like you don't have to do something just just do what you desire man this is a website that slogan is literally broadcast yourself I don't know if YouTube uses that slogan anymore but it, it's something that they used to use so there's that and for anyone that you know knew me and want to know why I quit well I made a video about it before I deleted my channel but essentially all right the commentary community is full of fakes all right it's full of people that adhere and, and apply moral principles to people that they don't themselves adhere to you know they make videos about other people all day long but they hate it when it happens to them you know if it's a person they don't like and something bad gets said about that person they all jump on that topic but you know anything else when it comes to someone that they like or don't have a problem with they're cool with it you know this is my problem with the commentary community in specific and this is the community keaton is from too so you know it's probably the majority you listening and a lot of you listening who knew me knew me as an asshole so it is what it is but that's my advice I had almost 4,000 subs I got a lot further than a lot of people in the smaller half of the commentary community will ever get so you know take my advice with a pinch of salt you know you might say well you're a nobody no one's gonna listen to you why should we listen to you we should listen to someone you know with more subs well I mean best of luck to you all anyways these are my questions I answered them for Keaton um, all I gotta say is man best of luck to you you were a cool dude when I knew you and uh, hope you have have a great life man peace so if there's one thing you should take away from this video if you're a small youtuber it's tough but just don't give up it may take a long time possibly several years even but your time will come uh, assuming you play your cards right and uh, let me know if you want to see more like IRL videos of me outside in the future so anyways thank you so much for watching big thanks to my little gremlins or <laughs> Sorry, big thanks to my friends for helping me film this video and putting up with me. And until next time, stop cutting your hair, remember to flush, and I will see you around. <laughs> okay, how does that look? How does that look? But a lot of them are young, specifically between middle school and high school, and very few of them have over a thousand subscribers. Fuck! He messed me up! <laughs> I can't give you a straight face! <laughs> okay, keep it going, keep it going, though. Dude! Alright, audio rolling. My balls. I know it. I will make sure that you're not. I will make sure that I don't kick your balls. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> okay. Especially due to the fact that a lot of these people are still in school and aren't able to balance uploading a video. Oh my god. You're fucking up the audio! No! Don't do drugs, kids. Don't do drugs. Don't do drugs, kids. Okay. Yeah, I'll I'll put that in there when we edit it. Okay. But that's not